Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Janet Velasquez and today we're going to review electrolyte disturbances. I want you to keep in mind the most significant and clinically relevant electrolyte disbalances will include sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. Remember, fluid and electrolyte balance is essential to your body's ability to maintain homeostasis. All right, so let's get started with sodium disbalances, and this will include hyponatremia and hypernatremia. Remember, sodium is a cation, and it's the major electrolyte found in the extracellular fluid. A normal sodium level is from 135 to 145 milliequivalents over liters. So when we talk about hyponatremia, we're referring to a sodium level that is below 135. And this may have many etiologies. Some of them could include fluid overload, which would cause hemodilution, decreased sodium intake, vomiting, diarrhea, nasogastric suctioning, diuretics, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, also known as SIADH, the use of hypotonic IV fluids, and hyperglycemia, just to name a few. So what does this client look like? What are our expected findings for this hyponatremic client? Well, they may have tachycardia, they may have a rapid thready pulse, could have hypotension, respiratory decompensation due to muscle weakness, could have headaches, confusion, lethargy, fatigue, they can have decreased DTRs, which are deep tendon reflexes. They could have a seizure leading all the way to a coma, hyperactive bowel sounds, anorexia, and vomiting. So what is your role here? What is the nursing care that we should provide for these clients? So the first thing that we need to do is maintain and monitor strict INOs, intake and output. We want to do daily weights, continuous vital signs, head to toe assessment. We want to apply principles to avoid any orthostatic hypotension. We want to restrict fluid if that's ordered by our provider. And we want to do oral replacement of sodium if the patient condition allows it. Now, if the hyponatremia is very severe, then the patient may require a hypertonic IV fluid replacement. Okay. So let's talk about the other side of the spectrum, which is hypernatremia, which is a sodium level above 145. Etiologies for this can include water deprivation, increased sodium intake either by mouth or by IV fluids, excessive sodium retention, use of glucocorticoids, and fluid loss. So what does this patient look like? What are our expected findings for the hypernatremic patient? Tachycardia, hypotension, restlessness, fatigue, decreased LOC, which is level of consciousness, disorientation, decreased DTRs. The client may report being thirsty, have dry mucous membranes, hyperactive bowel sounds, oliguria, to name a few. So what are our responsibilities with this client? What is our nursing care? Well, we need to monitor LOC. We need to provide oral hygiene. We need to, again, keep very strict INOs. We need to maintain a low salt diet. Now, if the hypernatremia is due to fluid loss, we can treat this with either a hypotonic or an isotonic fluid. If the hypernatremia is because of excess sodium, then we want to use a loop diuretic such as furosemide. Of course, we always have to assess that the client's kidney's renal status is within normal limits. Okay, so next we're going to be doing potassium. And potassium is a major cation in the intracellular fluid. A normal potassium level is from 3.5 to 5.0 milliequivalents over liters. Hypokalemia is a potassium level below 3.5, and etiologies will include hyperaldosteronism, receiving TPN, which is total parenteral nutrition, metabolic alkalosis, medications such as albuterol, 
insulin, loop diuretics and corticosteroids, vomiting and diarrhea, use of nasogastric suctioning, and diaphoresis, to name a few. What are our expected findings on this client? What is this client going to look like? Well, they can have weak, irregular pulse, hypotension, ascending bilateral weakness, hyperactive reflexes, mental confusion. In the EKG, we can see PVCs, we can see bradycardia, flattened or inverted T waves, U waves, or ST depressions. Now, let's talk about the nursing care for this client. Well, it's going to include replacing the potassium, whether it be orally or through an IV. Now, remember, we never push IV potassium. It is always to be given using a pump and at a slow rate. You wanna to continue to monitor this client's breathing, their cardiac rhythm. You need to monitor any client who's receiving digoxin concurrently, because remember, hypokalemia will put this client at higher risk for ditch toxicity. We need to continue to monitor client LOCs. We wanna monitor bowel sounds and any signs of abdominal distension. Now, on the other side, we have hyper Kalemia, which is a potassium level above five. Etiologies for this may include blood transfusions, the use of salt substitutes, client with burns, client with DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, sepsis, MI, which is myocardial infarction, clients with kidney failure, a client who uses either potassium sparing diuretics or uses ACE inhibitors, to name a few. Now, what are our expected findings with this client? Well, they may present with a slow, irregular pulse. They may have hypotension, some confusion, paresthesias, ascending paralysis, diarrhea, hyperactive bowel sounds. The EKG may have peak T waves, a widened PR interval and QRS interval. And last, but not least, asystole. So what is the nursing care that we can provide this client? Well, the hyperkalemic client requires a continuous EKG monitoring, a potassium restrictive diet, which we will avoid avocados, bananas, cantaloupe, potatoes, and spinach. We may have to even dialyze this patient if the potassium is extremely high. IV fluids that may contain dextrose and an insulin drip may be part of your orders. Now, if the kidney function is adequate, we may be able to administer a loop diuretic such as furosemide. In addition to this, we may also administer a medication which is called cayexalate or albuterol or insulin. The next electrolyte that we will review is calcium. And calcium is the major element in bones and teeth. A normal calcium level is from 8.6 to 10.2 milligrams per deciliter. Hypocalcemia is a calcium level below 8.6 and etiologies can include chronic diarrhea, laxative overuse, malabsorption syndrome, client with vitamin D deficiency, alkalosis, pancreatitis, or a client who's post-thyroidectomy, just to name a few. Now, what will the client look like? What are my expected findings? Client can present with numbness and tingling, a positive chopsticks and a positive trousseau sign. Client can have laryngospasms, they can have a weak and thready pulse. EKG may show a prolonged QT interval and a prolonged ST segment. The client may have diarrhea, may even have a seizure. Now we have to think about what is the nursing care for this client? Well, we'll have to administer either oral or IV calcium, and we always want to administer vitamin D at the same time to increase that absorption. You want to initiate seizure precautions and you always want to have that emergency equipment set up at bedside available for this client. Now, moving to the other end of the spectrum, we have hypercalcemia, which is a calcium level above 10.2.
Etiologies for this will include the use of medications like thiazide diuretics and long-term use of glucocorticoids. Clients who have either hyperthyroidism or hyperparathyroidism or simply a client who has cancer. Now, expected findings for this client are going to include decreased reflexes, they may have an increased risk for blood clots, they may present with anorexia, constipation, weakness, lethargy, decreased level of consciousness, and hypercalciuria in their labs. Well, what will our nursing care involve for this client? We will increase that fluid intake and we will decrease any calcium intake. We want to look out for oral or IV sources of calcium. We want to continue to monitor vital signs and we want to monitor this client for any pathological fractures. So with this being said, I would also place this client at an at risk for falls. Last but not least, we're going to talk about magnesium. Magnesium is the second most abundant intracellular cation after, you guessed it, potassium. A normal magnesium level is going to be from 1.3 to 2.3 milliequivalents over liters. Hypomagnesemia is a serum magnesium that is below that 1.3. Some etiologies for this will include diarrhea, NG suctioning, the use of thiazide or loop diuretics, blood transfusions, malnutrition, alcohol abuse, to name a few. Well, what will this client look like? Well, the client may present with hyperactive DTRs, paresthesias, muscle tetany, seizures, insomnia, a positive chopstick sign, a paralytic ileus, some tachycardia, some PVCs in their EKG, to name a few. Well, what will my nursing care involve for this client? We will have to replace definitely that magnesium, whether it be orally or through an IV, depending on the severity. Oral magnesium, you need to remember, that can cause diarrhea, which would make your magnesium depletion even worse. So we want to encourage our clients to have foods that are high in magnesium, such as whole grains and dark green vegetables. This concludes our series on electrolyte disturbances. I hope that you have found it educational and that you leave here today with a fundamental understanding of what are the most common electrolyte disturbances, how do those clients present, and how do we as nurses manage their care. Until next time.